have they experienced the kind of pushback where they are they find themselves being physically lifted up off the floor, thrown against walls. I mean, all of the dramatic stuff that we see on, on the big screen. Next step, after they've, de they've determined that this person in their mind has some sort of symptom enough to proceed, they screen these people through psychiatrists as well. So they will continue to send them back to doctors. In the case of the American Exorcist, that's a requirement. So they'll somebody who, you know, is a men mental health professional while they're blessing over them. And sometimes they get reactions while the, while the person is blessing. The case that I, I mentioned in the earlier hour about the scientist who had these coughs and, and uh, drooling and, and grunts and these kind of things. Later, later, Father Gary Thomas went on to perform a, a full exorcism over him. That's, that's in the paperback, and it was very, very violent, and, and all sorts of, of bizarre things happened. Um, in the case of what you were just describing, okay, so they, they possess, now they're going to begin the ritual. Well, usually they, you know, the ritual itself is, a, it's very particular uh, in, in certain ways. You know, there's the, the litany of the saints, there's the gospel readings, there's all these kind of things. And then in the, in the heart of the ritual are the exorcism prayer types. One is the depreciatory, which is the uh, exorcist entreating God to come down and help the person sort of a minor form of exorcism, and then the uh, the more direct, imperative prayer is, I cast you out, foul serpent, and all those kinds of things. That's kind of the meat of the, of the prayer. And the exorcist will use various tools that they have. They'll use their stole, touch the person. They'll use holy water to, um, you know, rubbing oil on their on their forehead. All these kind of uh, tricks that they've learned. And, I, and this is something that Father Gary Thomas saw himself. He was participating in exorcisms. He didn't know anything about it. If you read about the ritual, it doesn't tell you how an exorcist goes about performing it, so he had to see them, and when he was watching them, he had all sorts of questions. You know, why is the exorcist doing this? Why is, why is he doing that? Some exorcists will blow on people, a quick puff of air. Every exorcist has their own style, and every exorcism is said to be different. So they begin the exorcism in Italy, they see many people, so they don't have time to really go into the full exorcism. Father Gary, in America, he has more time. He performs the, the ritual as it's written down with the litany and everything. You know, the ritual itself allows the exorcist to vary the prayers, and that's because every demon is said to be different, and the exorcist is supposed to probe and find what makes, uh, what gets the strongest reaction out of the... I've seen exorcisms where the exorcist was saying, you know, um, humble yourself before the Lord, and that, that was something that got a really strong reaction, you know, this cursing and, and wailing and no, 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 and all those kinds of things, and so the exorcist will keep saying it, humble yourself before this kind of thing, so, and, and they're very, they're very calm, uh, I think people assume that the exorcists are violent, but that's not true, the exorcist is very calm, they, they put their hand on top of their head, they begin the ritual by invoking the Holy Spirit, they put their hand on top of the person's head, and then they just pray to sort of mumbling it under their breath in Latin. And then you do get these weird reactions. You get the person who's trying to hit their hands off. The face will change, become very uh, evil. Sometimes the facial muscles will go become unnaturally rigid. A case where an exorcist that I find to be incredibly um, credible, an American exorcist, who almost doesn't believe in demonic possession, he saw a woman levitate four inches off a chair. Um, the exorcist that I followed in Italy said that he had seen a woman who the people were sitting in a chair in a small room where the chair was, the chair was uh, back to the wall. So, uh, by the way, it was also inside a cemetery, which seems kind of strange, but mm -hmm. this was a, ca a capuchin priest, so he, <laughs> for, um, for the cemeteries in, in Rome, and, and they had this room basically jutting out into the cemetery. So you'd look out the, out the window and you'd see these a row of mausoleums. And this room was very small and the wall was all scratched up. And, and in this room, I didn't see this, but the exorcist I interviewed told me many stories, and this is one of them, that he saw a woman, and actually this isn't in the book, but he saw a woman put the back of her head against the wall and then levitate up, so to speak. Um, and you can see all sorts of weird smells. You can hear this guttural voice. I heard it myself. It's very unnatural. It doesn't, doesn't sound human. I mean, it doesn't sound like something a human can make. It has an animal quality to it. It definitely creeped me out. Um, right. The majority of exorcisms are very mild. People are just coughing, yawning is another one, drooling. 
they're crying, they're, they, they can sit there, be rigid. Um, and in fact, when Father Gary saw about 80, uh, Father Gary Thomas saw 80, when he went saw about seven, and they were all of these kind of mild nature, either person crying or coughing, lots of coughing, uh, even some belching, but not a normal burp mm. like you just had a beer, but just something that's sort of coming up from the stomach. And he, you know, he went home with a bus and he up. I mean, just didn't seem, it didn't match up in his mind what he expected to see. And then later, um, he saw a case that I documented in the book, a very, very strong case that, that, that scared him, uh, you know, but also reinforced that this is a reality. And, and in this made open, because usually the people clench their eyes tight, and then the exorcist will open their eyes, and this is in the film, the right, uh, it's just out now, the exorcist will open their eyes, and you see the, the whites of the, of the eyes. Um, and in this case, and she looked at him, and, and the, he described the eyes as being like Coke bottles, very unnaturally thick and black, and, and he said it was the absolutely, it's like the gaze of evil just penetrating into him, and, and it was a very emotional experience for him. But, you know, in, in, you know, human beings tend to believe much more what they see. Why hasn't the Catholic Church made a, a history of filming or videotaping these exorcisms to show things like the, the woman levitating with legs going up in the air and things like that where that people might be more inclined to believe? Well, you know, I, I can't I can't say for sure because with today's technology, unfortunately, you, you just as likely to do film something like that, and people would come out fifty fifty and say. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, yeah, but I'd hate to but, have a, I'd hate to have that be the reason why they didn't do it. Oh, no one will believe it anyway. I think there would be a lot of people if, if you have the person that said this was me. You have their family members. There's a there would be a whole variety of evidence that would be offered. That, if nothing else, would bring a lot of Catholics back to the Catholic Church. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a valid point. I, I certainly can't speak for why the church does what it does and why extras won't allow people to, to film. I, as far as I know, I'm one of the very few journalists that's ever been allowed into a real exorcism, and I, I saw around 30 in, the, in researching the book. But I, I think there's also something to be said about, about maintaining the decorum of what these priests are doing. They believe that what they're dealing with is demonic. They're not, they don't have to prove it to other people, you know what I mean? So they believe it or not. They were certain that it's real. So if, if you're going from that mindset, what you're doing is you want, they want to take care of these people. They want to help them. They don't want to turn this ritual into a spectacle. They don't want cameras in the room and, and outsiders in the room. So they, and they're very cautious about maintaining the, the, um, the seriousness of the ritual, about helping these people. These people are suffering. Even if you don't believe it's real, these people are going through an intense amount of suffering. Uh, I saw all these exorcisms. I found it very hard that they were faked. Um, I didn't see anything that made me think that there were that the people, whatever it was, they had a clear problem. I didn't see them trying to get attention. I mean, these people were. Right, right. No, I get that. Uh, yeah, so I, I really think that um, that's one I, of the aspects of why they don't, I think, want a camera in the room. I guess uh, it'll go over that, that we'll pick this up here with Matt Baglio. It seems like if you're going to tell, the, if the priest is going to tell the story, oh, this is what I saw, and they're going to talk about it as having, you know, being an event as, as a way of convincing people, it just seems like easier to show it. But uh, fair enough. Uh, Matt Baglio, the right, the making of a modern... But your time is coming, so be ready. Jot them down. Don't forget them. Coming up on Coast to Coast, this is Ian Punnett. News Talk 97.3 Cairo.